Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will solve the fourth problem from the Jump Kim series. Let's look at the problem statement. Given an array of integers, you are initially positioned at the first index of the array. From any index i, you can jump to either index i plus 1 or i minus 1 or any index j provided i and j is having the same value and also i and j are two different indices. We have to return the minimum number of jumps required to reach the last index of the array. Notice you cannot jump outside of the array at any given point of time. As I have made videos solving the previous problems from the jump game series, by now you must be knowing that we will be solving this problem with BFS method. So again, we will be using QData structure with some minor modifications. Let's check out those now. So by the time, if you have not watched my previous videos from the Jump Game series, please do watch them first in a sequence to get an idea how we start solving problems from the brute force method and how we move towards optimal solution with some minor changes in approach and as well as in the code. This will help in grasping the pattern of the problem solving. Now let's begin with the test case given in the lead code problem for this problem statement and let's see how we can solve this problem using BFS with some minor modifications in the existing approach. So this is a given array. I have written the array as well as the index values and there are three uh, options to go from any index i. Either I can go to i plus 1 or i minus 1 or I can go to any index j uh, provided i and j these two indices are different but the value uh, at i and j are same. So I have written that in uh, conditions over here. Now one thing is here to note that we have to maintain some data structure and the values so that we can uh, satisfy this point number three or condition three. So one uh, quick way which will be uh, space and time complexity efficient is unordered map. Because in unordered map, we can uh, have like order of one time complexity to do the searching. So <clears throat> we will be using unordered map to store different values and their indices. So let's uh, first create that unordered map over here. So I will be having value 100 and 100 is present in the indices at 0 and 4. Similarly, minus 23, this will be present in indices 1 and 2. 404, this is present in index 3 and 9. 23, this is present in index 5, 6 and 7. And in value 3, this is present index 8. So this is the map that I have created. Now we'll start with um, Q data structure to solve the problems. As you know, we are starting from index 0 and the target is to reach the last index, which is um, 9 in this case. And we have to return the minimum number of jumps, which is, re which is required. So, we have to maintain a Q data structure and as well as to get the number of jumps, we have to keep track of the level of the tree that we are forming. And the first time we are visiting index, last index, 9 uh, in this case, we will be returning the level uh, of the tree, that is the number of jumps. So for that, we will be first pushing uh, Q, uh, we will be pushing index 0, which is our starting index in the Q. Now, there are three options. 
so first uh, my q is having value 0 and the jump value is 1 uh, sorry jump value is 0 initialized to 0 now from index i there are three options one is i can go to minus 1 i can go to 1 or i can go to 4 because uh, this is my j and this is my i and this is my j and uh, these two values are same 100 but i and j is different now as it is mentioned that we cannot go outside of the array range so this is not possible now we have to check um, so and i will be popping this value from the queue uh, so next uh, in my queue I have 1 and 4 and jump value is incremented by 1 because this is level 0 but this is level 1. So my jump value is 1. Now explore this uh, index 1. From 1 there are again 3 options. I can go to 0, I can go to 2 or I can go to index 2 here again. Right? Now 2 is uh, 0 is already visited so no need to do this thing we can push 2 here because it's on the same level and from 4 um, again I will be having 3 options 1 is 3 again is 5 and uh, again is 0 now as uh, this is present and 0 is already visited so I can ignore this. Now to maintain this visited node concept what we can do we can remove this element this value from the map that means anytime I'm visiting a uh, zero or any index I actually I am visiting all the indices which is having the same value right so at one go I can remove this entry from the map to represent like these indices are already explored or visited so when i have already explored explored zero i have already explored four because their value is 100 once i have explored this uh, zero i can remove this entry from the map to mention like this is already visited so that here again i cannot push zero here i cannot push zero because 100 is not present in the map again right now here it is level 2 also my jump value is 2 now let's see 2 <coughs> from 2 I can go to either 1 I can go to 3 or I can go to 1 which is so again here you see we don't will we won't be um, exploring these things because these values are not present in the map so once I have explored this value 1 I will be removing this entry <coughs> right I will be push these two over here but I will be removing these entry so uh, this from 2 when I will be exploring 2 I will be having 1 but I will not find any value uh, 23 in the map so I will not explore this or I will not push this thing in the map again similarly I will be exploring 3 but even if 3 is present uh, here it's not been in, uh, explored yet so I will be pushing it in the queue um, and for 2 minus 23 is not present so this option won't get explored and I uh, and I have removed this minus 23 so again for 2 <coughs> I will be having 1 but eventually I will not push 1 there but 3 I will push because uh, 3 is already present now I will explore this 3 so when I explore this 3 I will be having options for 2 to 4 and for 9 2 will get cancelled out because it's already been visited 4 is being cancelled out because again 100 is uh, not present so 9 is the only option 
similarly from 5 i can go to 4 i can go to 6 or i can go to 7 because it is present here okay and at this step my level is 3 so my jump value is also 3 and here you see i have explored 3 already so i will be removing this entry and uh, as i have explored 5 6 7 i will be removing this entry also right now see 3 from 3 i can go to 2 4 but uh, 2 is uh, like already visited 4 is already visited and uh, 3 4 zero is for not present so this will not get executed so similar thing will happen for this 9 now uh, this 3 and check 9 9 is already the last index so the first time i'm visiting 9 and my jump value is uh, 3 right so i will be uh, i'm required to take three jumps right so using a uh, queue and uh, with this unordered map and uh, maintaining the levels of the tree we can return what is the minimum number of jump that is required in this case um, now let's code the code it so first i am taking the array of size and i will be using a integer queue also, I need the jump which is initialized to 0. Okay. Now, first in Q, I will push my start index which is 0. And I will continue the process while my Q is not empty. Each time, each, with each level up, I will be incrementing my uh, jump size. And with that thing, I will be having what is a queue size at that point of time. So that once the level is completed, I can increment my jump. And while this queue size is greater than 0, I will be having i, which is my queue of front. And I will be doing queue pop operation and uh, similar same time i will be decrementing the, the size now there are options like i can go to i plus one or i can go to i minus one or i can go to some j where i not equals to j and value of i is value of j okay so one thing before we start entire process we have to do the fill the map right so for that i will be taking some unordered map of integer and will have a vector to store the indices now to fill the map i will start with zero let's put n here i plus plus and this is my current value which is array of i now i will check if mapping is already having this value or not so if this is already not present then i will create a temp vector inside that i will push back my current index and mapping of value will be temp else if it is already present i will push back my current index so in this way i am filling up my uh, unordered map here each time i will check if i plus one is less than n less than equals to n 
and uh, mapping dot find arr of i plus one not equals to mapping of n, which means uh, this node is already not visited, right? And at the same time, we have to do one more check whether I have reached the last index or not. So that is possible only with i plus 1, right? If i plus 1 is double equals to n minus 1, then I will return my jump. Else, or in all other cases, I will push i plus 1. <clears throat> Similarly, in this case, I will check if i minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Sorry, here it has to be n minus less than <coughs> mapping dot find error of i minus 1 is not equals to mapping of n then I will simply push my i minus 1 over here and in this case if <coughs> mapping dot find error of i is not equals to mapping of end then i will take this temp array of which contains uh, all the indices for this thing and int sum g for let's take this as k for simplicity k is 0 then k is less than temp dot size and k plus plus Right. If temp of k, this is the index which is not equals to i. Let's take it in another way. Let's put it like this. And here, check like this. If i not equals to j, then I will push this j. And once done, I will erase that index entirely, right? And I think I'm incrementing this jump. I'm doing the warp, and at the end of the while loop, whatever the jump value is, I will return that jump value. Now I have to check whether I have uh, handled the edge cases also. If edge case means here, so the base case is like <clears throat> if n is 0, then I will return 0, um, or if n is 1, this should be fine. Let's see. Line number 57. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it's giving me wrong answer. Okay, I have to check here again. If I'm reaching the end also or not. Yeah, here also. Right? I need to check here also if I'm reaching n minus 1 I have to return jump from here as well <clears throat> okay it's accepted let's submit It's got submitted now one thing to note here is why we added uh, this part over here as you know like if we go to the next uh, time we are incrementing the jump value right if we go to the next level so as and when we find of uh, n minus 1 index we have to return the jump so that's why whenever the, the two possibility one is when we are incrementing i with 
we are going to i plus 1 and the next possibility is when we are exploring the other indices uh, which are having the same value so there are two possibility when we can first visit this uh, last index so that condition we have put here like uh, whenever we are getting the n minus 1 index just return the jump value now coming to the required uh, time complexity so time complexity is also order of n because we are exploring each node once and space complexity is also order of n because um, or basically it's not actually order of n because uh, if there are total n distinct values then the unordered map will be having size of n or we can say order of d where uh, d is number of distinct distinct element in the array that also we can see or um, uh, we uh, we can ignore this uh, Q size here because that's already been taken care uh, in this mapping size. Uh, the Q sizes also will be order of n at max. So basically, times complexity is order of n and space complexity is also order of n. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next videos.